Today on Documentify TV, we've got a great show planned for you today. We'll be talking about what's going on at Lake Huron. Bit by bit, they are bringing up artifacts that are the beginning to the pieces of a puzzle that is starting to come together. Get comfortable as we get into this on today's show. Okay, imagine like a, a Pompeii, you know, but, but underwater. We're diving into Lake Huron this time. Early Americans um, hunted caribou on this land, and and it's underwater now. Crazy, right? Yeah, it's wild. Like we're not talking about just like, you know, a few little artifacts here and there. Yeah. Researchers have found like this whole landscape, like it's preserved underwater in Lake Huron. And our source, by the way, is this article from Bridge, Michigan. It's all about you know the archaeology going on there. Mm. Like, this this submerged world. It's older than a lot of famous civilizations. Like we're talking ten thousand years old. Yeah, that's right. Done. Oldest underwater site in the Great Lakes? I mean, think about it, older than the pyramids. It's amazing. So the our couple talks about um, this land bridge, the Alpena Amberley Ridge. It used to connect Michigan and Ontario. But then um, about 8,000 years ago, the water levels rose and boom, submerged the bridge, created the lake we see today. And the water, it didn't destroy everything. It was like this huge time capsule, preserved all these artifacts that would just, you know, rotted away on land. They found hunting blinds, this pathway made of boulders, probably used for herding caribou, and even like stone flakes, like left over from making tools. Wow. It's like a, a snapshot of life, you know, just frozen in time. But here's where it gets even more interesting. They found these tools. They're small and they're unlike anything else from that time. In the Great Lakes region, at least. Right. So that makes you wonder, like, who were these people? How do they fit in with all the other early societies in North America? Were they, like, super specialized? Did they develop their own tools? Or did they come up with these tools totally separate from everyone else? So maybe instead of being just like a, a branch of another group, they were their own whole culture. Yeah, it's possible. And that's not the only mystery. They found peat bogs, too. They're, like, 9,500 years old <laughs> at the bottom of the lake. Um. Okay, so for those of us who aren't you know, archaeologists, what's a peat bog and why is it a big deal? Well, a peat bog is like a wetland. It's got all these layers of, well, like partially decayed plants. And this creates an environment with like low oxygen. It's really good for preserving stuff like plants, even animal remains. And scientists, they're hoping to get DNA from the peat to learn more about the ecosystem and, and the people who live there. So it's like another window into the past. Right. Like we can find out their diet, the diseases they had, maybe even how they migrated. Exactly. It's like a whole other level of archaeology. And then there's this. They found volcanic obsidian flakes at the site. But here's the thing. These flakes, they came from central Oregon. Whoa. That's thousands of miles away. Are we talking like some kind of ancient... Uh, trading network here? Were these people connected to others across that distance? It's definitely possible. Researchers are super interested in that. The obsidian suggests that they weren't totally isolated. Maybe they were part of a much bigger network, maybe even trade routes spanning huge distances. It's so much more complex than I thought. It makes you wonder what else is down there. That's the thing. There's still so much we just we don't know. Mm. And unfortunately, there's a problem. Funding for the research is going to run out soon. It could stop all this exploration. Seriously. So we've got this incredible underwater world. Artifacts in amazing condition. Unique tools. Maybe DNA from peat bogs. Potential long distance connections. And now it might all start because of money. Yeah. It's a big concern. Mm -hmm. These discoveries could totally change how we understand early human history in North America. But without support, those secrets, they might just stay hidden underwater. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a serious problem for sure. Hmm. This site could really change how we understand, you know, early humans in North America. Yeah. And we've already found so much. The hunting blinds, the pathway for the caribou, those strange tools. It's like we're putting a puzzle together and each discovery is like another piece, but there are still so many pieces missing. Exactly. And, and the pieces we do have, they ask so many questions like those unique tools. They tell us these people were really skilled. You know, yeah. making things and they adapted to this environment mm -hmm. in ways we're just starting to figure out. The obsidian is what gets me, I think. Finding something from so far away really changes things. It's like a level of, I don't know, sophistication, connection that we don't always think about with hunter gatherers. Right. It challenges how we think about them, you know? They weren't just isolated, surviving day to day, they were part of something bigger, exchanging things, maybe ideas even across huge distances. It tells you something about how complex their society was and how they could adapt and thrive even. And those peat bogs. 
They give us a whole other level of insight. Imagine analyzing DNA from 9,500 years ago. We can learn so much about what they ate, their health, even how they moved around. Yeah, it'd be like having a time machine, wouldn't it? We could track their movements, see how they interacted with other groups, maybe even reconstruct what the environment was like back then, in detail. It'd be like filling in those missing pages of a history book. Bye. But if the funding stops, it's like closing the book before we've even finished it. That's true. And it's not just about the past either. What we learn here could be valuable for us today, even for the future. What do you mean? What can we learn from people who lived thousands of years ago? Well, think about it. These people were really good at adapting. They lived in a tough environment, they developed sustainable ways to hunt, and they formed these complex social networks. So you're saying that by learning from them, you know, how they succeeded, maybe even failed, we could learn how to manage our resources better, adapt to climate change, build stronger communities. Exactly. There's a lot of knowledge to be gained from the past, not just to understand history, but to help us now and in the future. Okay, I'm starting to get it. This isn't just about, you know, old artifacts. It's about our story, you know, as humans. Yeah. And maybe finding solutions to problems we face today. Right. And that's why it's so important that people know about this and support this research. These discoveries could change how we view history, but only if the exploration continues. So what's your take? Who were these people who lived on the Alpena Amberley Ridge? Well, based on what we know, I'd say they were a separate group, maybe even a unique culture. They made specialized tools. They were expert hunters. And because of that obsidian, they were connected to the wider world, exchanging things over huge distances. So they were self-sufficient, but also connected, a testament to how adaptable and clever humans are. It makes you think, what would they have achieved if, you know, the water hadn't risen? What else is down there waiting to be found? Those are questions that more research can answer. But for now, the important thing is that the research does continue. The Alpena Emberley Ridge is full of information about human history, and it's up to us to support the work to uncover it and preserve these stories. It's crazy to think about, you know, yeah. these people living their lives, hunting caribou, making their tools, building a whole society on this land bridge that's, well, gone now, underwater. Yeah, and it makes you think, like, what did they believe in? What were their stories? What did they think when they saw, you know, the stars at night? We might never know. But that's part of what makes archaeology so interesting, I think, trying to find those answers. It's like we're looking into this world that's familiar, but also totally different. We see ourselves in them a bit, you know, like they were smart, they were tough. But there's also so much we just don't know. It feels like we're just starting to uncover their story. Yeah. And, and that's what's so cool, right? There's always more to find out, more to learn, more to ask about. Every new artifact, every piece of data, it can change how we see the past and even challenge what we thought we knew. So thinking about everything we've talked about today, the land bridge, the artifacts, the tools, the peat bogs, the connections to other places, what do you think? Who were these people who lived on the Alpena Amberley Ridge? Well, I think they were a tough and resilient people, adapted to that environment on the ridge. They were good at making tools, skilled hunters. And like we said, the obsidian shows they were connected to a bigger world, part of these networks that stretched who knows how far. So self-sufficient, but also connected. Really shows you what humans can do, right? Adapt, mm -hmm. innovate. It makes you wonder, what could they have done if, you know, if things had been different? What else is still down there? Yeah, good questions. Hopefully future research will give us some answers. But for now, we've got to make sure that research happens. The Alpena Amberley Ridge has so much to teach us about ourselves, about history, and we have to support the work to uncover it and protect it. That's right. So to everyone listening, go check out this site. Learn more about the research. Share what you learn. And think about how this changes what we thought we knew about history. And never stop being curious. Keep asking questions. Keep exploring. Keep diving deep into these mysteries from the past. Because they can help us understand the present. And maybe even shape the future. That's it for today's video, folks. See you next time right here on Documentify TV.